We're doing the disc tutorial. I'm gonna delete everything, and a CD is basically a circle. Let's give it a fine 150 vertices, so fine. Hit F for fill, and I for inset, and I'm just gonna kinda go to a size like this. This seems right. And what I'm doing right now is basically isolating the sections that are transparent. A CD has a transparent spot in the middle and on the rim. I'm gonna actually select these components, separate by selection, so that this is now its own object. Well, why am I doing that? Well, now we can go into edit mode and extrude this individually, and I'm gonna recenter this, which you can see gives it just the tiniest bit of a lip. The rest of this is materials. So for the first part of the disc, make a material. I'm going to call this the metal part. And for the other selection, I'm going to call this the plastic part, I guess. Let's make a bit of a distinction. Full metal and also very low roughness, maybe even 0.1. And for the metallic components, not only is it a metal and reflective, but you can see there's also color and like lines going on here. We're going to be using the tangent coordinate space, which we never use. But you're going to see the tangent space kind of comes with these diagonal lines from the center. Run this through a hue saturation value value node where this is the hue and the color is a color and all of a sudden you got this uh, cool gradient you can actually just go around the spectrum super saturated I'm just gonna bring this down temporarily and we'll see how we can blend this in this is gonna be the base color which now gives us a colorful reflection and you're gonna notice that when we look at this it doesn't change depending on what angle we look at it from remember a disc seems to have like this colorful thing going on we're gonna do it by using another coordinate space we never use this time it's called incoming that has a lot of weird uses but the point is you can see it kind of looks different depending on what angle I view view it from. Technically, it's looking at the camera and looking at like the view ray and stuff like that. And roughly speaking, if we take our tangent and just add this, in other words, we're saying we like tangent, but we want some of this view dependence. This colorful gradient is actually a view dependent. In the specular workspace, you're going to take anastropic and bring it all the way up, which you can see all of a sudden kind of creates this weird design. And we can take the rotation and kind of give it different designs. So I'm just going to rotate it until it looks like the lines are kind of like shooting outward. Now, I don't want the roughness to be uniform. I want there to be a bit of variation. So I'm actually going to use a Voron noise texture to create some dust and noise, which is kind of new for me. But now there's kind of like new settings with the detail and roughness and all that. And I find that this works pretty well for dust. So I'm just going to run this through a subtraction. And when we pick the right number, we kind of get this very nice dust map. Something like that looks good. And I'm going to filter this through a color ramp so that the bottom end of the spectrum has a roughness of like 0.25. And let's say the top end of the spectrum has a roughness of like 0.4 that I'm going to use for the roughness. And I'm also thinking we might be able to use this dust map. Actually, I'm sure of it. We can use the dust map to also add a bit of coloration, not just like roughness difference. So I created this new color ramp that I'm going to use as a factor here. If I bring this up, you'll see it's a bit more obvious, but we don't want it to be that intense. So I'm just going to do some color ramp and fanciness here. I'm going to take this red and make it more of a grayscale thing. And now we have a, a dusty disc. <laughs> I love it when people say that. I um. Oh. Now one issue is that the bottom of this disc also experiences the same thing, which is fine, except like I think this layer should either have a sticker on it or maybe should just be a gray. Well, the geometry node has something called back facing, which gives us different colors depending on like if this is oriented to the normal or not. And I can throw another mix in here using the back facing as the factor. So now we can kind of pick between two colors. Let's have one of them be red such that the top part is what we're used to. And then on the bottom, we also have this being red. I'm going to change the color to, I think, pure white. You can see now it's kind of like a silvery color. Final part of this is that the glassy, well, it's plastic. That part isn't making any sense. So in the plastic, I'm just going to get rid of all this. You think it's much easier to actually use a glass BSDF. So I'm going to take the color, maybe give it a tiny blue. And as for the index of refraction, I don't really know what it is for plastic. There is a number out there, but but I'm thinking for a rough approximation, I'm going to use 1.2 just so it doesn't bend light as much. I feel like the real test is just kind of like rotating this in space. So that was the disc tutorial. There's a link in the description and bye.